Hello, my name is Jody Holmes, and I'm a Courseware developer with the Juniper Networks Education Services Group. Today we're going to be discussing the Juniper Networks security solution for virtualized data centers called the VGW Virtual Gateway. VGW combines a stateful firewall, an intrusion detection system, antivirus protection, and compliance tools that are all designed to scale with a virtual environment. For this learning bite, we'll go through a quick overview of the problem that VGW solves, and then perform an actual VGW installation within a virtual lab environment. Securing traditional and virtualized data centers. Traditional data centers are typically secured through the use of external physical firewalls and intrusion detection systems. These external devices police all traffic to and from the data center as well as traffic between the servers themselves. With the advent of server virtualization, a new network is created that functions within the server host machines. Virtualized servers now utilize an internal software switch called a vSwitch for switching traffic flowing between the virtual machines running on a host server. The problem is that traffic between the virtual machines on a host server stays within this vSwitch and never actually leaves the host server. This creates a blind spot for traditional type of external firewalls and IDS devices. VGW relies on a few simple components that work in conjunction with one another to provide complete security for a virtual environment. The four main components are the Security Design Virtual Machine, or SDVM. The Security Design VM manages all of VGW's deployment and configuration. Because virtual environments can be extremely dynamic, the SDVM is integrated heavily with VMware's vCenter. The second component is the Security VM, or SVM. A Security VM is installed on each of the physical ESXi hosts. These small virtual machines are very lightweight and serve a number of roles, including the IDS and antivirus functionalities. They are also responsible for loading and communicating with the third component, the VGW kernel module. The VGW kernel module integrates directly into the hypervisor and is what allows complete isolation of communication flows to and from each of the virtual machines on a secured host. The kernel module performs many security functions, including packet inspection and security policy enforcement. The fourth component is the web user interface. It is browser-based and is what you use to manipulate, configure, and maintain VGW. All right, installing VGW. As with any type of install, there are usually prerequisites involved and VGW is no exception. Before installing VGW into your environment, you should verify that one, the VMs can communicate with each other. Two, VMware vCenter has no firewall blocking traffic to it. Uh, the reason for this is that the SDVM must be able to communicate with vCenter for this uh, VGW solution to work. You need to verify that a proper service account is available for the SDVM to use. Uh, also, NTP and DNS should be properly working on your network. And finally, uh, access to the ESXi host should be available through SSH or a KVM switch uh, should problems arise during installation. This slide here shows the uh, virtual uh, lab environment that we're going to be using today. You might want to take a second and pause this video and study this for a few moments. I've already logged into the virtual lab environment we're going to be using. Now the first thing you want to do when installing VGW is actually download the software. You can do that by going to Juniper site, clicking on support, Download Software, VGW Virtual Gateway, the Software tab, and you'll want to download the latest combo package. Uh, in this case, it's 5.5.c-4-6. Now, I'm not going to download the package now. It would take too long. We've already got one on this virtual environment. Uh, it's a slightly older version, but it'll serve our purposes just as well. So after you've downloaded the software, the next thing to do is to log into the vSphere client. This will take uh, just a few moments, and then you'll get to see uh, how the virtual lab environment is set up. Okay, so if, uh, if you take a look here, we have our training data center, and underneath it we have 
two ESXi hosts, ESX1.vclass.local and ESX2.vclass.local. Uh, each of those ESX uh, hosts have a few VMs hanging off of them, CentOS 1-1, CentOS 1-2, and so on. Uh, so to actually install VGW, it's a standard OVA package, that combo package we downloaded. Go to File, Deploy OVF Template, even though it's an OVA. Click on Browse, find the file you downloaded. In this case, like I said, it's an OVA. Go ahead and click Next. Uh, it's a small uh, window here with some details. And of course, the uh, all-important EULA, the End User License Agreement. Does anybody actually read these? I don't know. Anyway, click Accept. Click Next. Uh, for our purposes, we're just going to leave everything as the default for the name and location. Uh, we want to make sure it's on the training data center. And in our case, we're going to install the, uh, the SDVM onto esx1.vclass.local. You could choose any ESX host in your network, of course. And we are going to actually install that VM on the NFS data store we have in this virtual network. Now in this case, um, since it is an NFS data store, our only option is to uh, choose thin provisioning. Um, VGW and Juniper uh, recommend that you use thick provisioning uh, whenever possible, but uh, like I said, in this case, since it's an NFS data store, thin provision is our only option. We're going to leave this as default on our production network that we've set up previously. And we will leave the VGW database size at the uh, default 8 gigabytes. This can be changed later uh, if necessary. Um, for now, we want to leave the uh, power on after deployment box here unchecked. And we'll go ahead and click finish. Now this is going to take uh, several minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this screencast and we'll pick it up when it's finished. All right, we're almost at the end of the VGW install. Okay. Now, uh, after installation, you'll notice that uh, a VMware vApp has been installed uh, called Juniper VGW. And beneath that are two VMs, the Security Design VGW, the SDVM we spoke about earlier, and the SVM template. Now, the first thing to do is to actually change this VM into a template, and that's going to be what VGW uses to spin up and install uh, the security VMs on each of the hosts. So to do that, you just right-click, choose Template, and Convert to Template. Now that will disappear, and we're ready to actually power on the SDVM. Do that by clicking the green Power On button. And we can actually watch it if we go here to the console. Now, like before, this takes uh, several minutes to actually boot up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the screencast again. OK, we've reached the uh, end of that part of the install. And now you are at the uh, SDVM console. So you want to log in with admin admin. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to configure the network. You'll have to excuse sort of the virtual environment we're working in here with all those extra keystrokes. In this case, we're going to choose static. And our IP address is going to be 10.10.100.1. The network mass we'll leave at the default 255.255.255.0. Our gateway will be 10.10.100.100. Go ahead and type yes at the confirmation prompt. And we'll give it just a few moments to push down the interface, reconfigure it, and then bring it back up. And once it's done, we'll uh, try a quick ping test to make sure that we can ping our gateway.
All right, that's finished. Let's try to ping the gateway. And looks like we're good to go there. So now what we can do is we can actually log into the web interface of the SDVM. So we'll go ahead and minimize the vSphere client, bring a browser back up, and we'll attempt to get to 10.10.100.1. Of course, uh, grant the security exception. And there you go. The, uh, that's the basic login to the security design VM. In this case, it's admin admin. And the first thing VGW will have you do is run through another wizard uh, to set up some, uh, some basic stuff within VGW. So we're going to have to change the current password, we'll change it from admin to Juniper. And for the uh, DNS server, we'll change it to 10.10.100.100, which is our gateway. We'll leave everything else the same for now. Our NTP server, again, we're going to choose our uh, same 10.10.100.100. And VGW uh, comes with a 30-day evaluation license um, upon install. If you had a purchase license, you could enter that here by clicking on this link. Uh, for now, we are going to continue with uh, the 30-day evaluation mode. Everything's enabled in VGW with that, with the exception of antivirus updates and IDS signature updates. All right, the all-important vCenter settings. So for vCenter, our vCenter is 10.10.100.99. And uh, administrator is our username, password. And down here, uh, if you had multiple data centers within your virtual environment, you could choose which ones uh, to talk with here. Um, as you can see, our training one is present. But for our case, we're just going to go ahead and choose entire vCenter. Now, as soon as we click Next Step, uh, it's going to communicate with vCenter and download uh, all of our ESX hosts and VMs on those. All right, as you can see, it's found the two ASX hosts and all the VMs we have on there. All right, for the email and reporting module settings, uh, we're not going to change those for now, so we'll just go ahead and click Next. Uh, for the VM safe installation, you want to choose which template to use. In our case, the uh, template that we converted earlier is the one we want to choose. Click, go ahead and click Next Step. And as soon as that's done, click Done and you are immediately dumped into the main VGW interface. This is the module toolbar up at the top. You can go through the different modules. This is the main, the uh, network module here, firewall, IDS, antivirus, introspection, compliance, and finally the reporting module, and the all-important setting module. The settings module is where you would uh, you know, secure different hosts within your virtual network, um, and we will save that for another learning byte since we are out of time. But there you go, uh, installing VGW in about 10 minutes. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.